students, welcome to Cape Biology Unit 2 and congratulations to you on passing your Cape Biology Unit 1 examination. Well, we have three modules to cover. Let's get to work. Today, I'll be looking at the first objective of your syllabus. You should know how to describe the structure of a dicot leaf a palisade cell and a chloroplast and when you do you should be able to relate these structures to the roles that they play secondly as successful k biology students you should be able to produce annotated diagrams of these three structures let's start with objective one the external structure of a dicot leaf. Dicotyledonous. Di means two. Cotyledons. Remember what the cotyledons were from CSEC biology? Germination? Yes, they are the first two emerging embryonic leaves from a germinating seed. So we say a dicot plant has two seed leaves cotyledons. And we can also infer from that what a monocot is. Having one seed leaf cotyledon. Good job. So the external anatomy of the dicot leaf. A typical dicot leaf is not immediately attached to the stem. It is separated from the stem by the leaf stalk or petiole. Dicots have a central midrib or a central vein that runs from the base to the tip of the leaf. The midrib also branches off into other veins, which we call lateral veins. And the edge of the leaf is called the leaf margin, right? So these are some external features of the dicot leaf. Let's move to the internal features of the dicot leaf. Here is my diagram of the internal structure of the dicot leaf. Come on, guys. How is it? You gotta give me 10 out of 10. A girl got skills, right? I kind of make it 3D as possible. I hope you guys love it. So let's start with the structures first, and then we'll relate the structures to their functions. At the upper region of the dicot leaf, for Kate biology students know, so start using your terminologies. Upper, adaxial, lower, abaxial. But the upper region, you find waxicuticle. Below the waxicuticle, we see a thin layer of cells, and we call this the upper epidermis. Immediately below the upper epidermis, we have a group of cells tightly packed with numerous green organelles can anybody tell me the name of these green organelles if you're thinking chloroplast you're on your way to a grade one these group of cells make up the palisade parenchyma below the palisade parenchyma what's happening the cells are no longer tightly packed and they're irregular right? And there's a lot of space between them. We call this region the spongy parenchyma or the spongy mesophyll. Let's not forget the vascular bundle. The vascular bundle is located central to the leaf and they're arranged in rings. And in monocot, they're scattered at the lower area or the abaxial layer of the leaf we also find another layer of epidermal cells we say this is the lower epidermis and note some holes in the lower epidermis these holes represent the stomatal holes the stomata controlled by guard cells are the pores in the upper and lower epidermis that facilitate gaseous exchange. Now, what's the significance of 
this die cut leaf having these beautiful adaptations let's start with the significance of having a waxy cuticle both at upper and lower regions so the waxy cuticle prevents water loss from the leaf recall water is one of the reactants for the photosynthesis process along with carbon dioxide and light now the leaf must have a epidermal region we know from lower school that epidermal cells are involved in the protection of other tissues beneath from toxins and pathogens they also work in conjunction with the waxy cuticle to prevent water loss Having the palisade parenchyma immediately below the upper epidermis maximizes the amount of light captured for the photosynthesis process. I want you to note an important thing here. Palisade cells have numerous chloroplasts, right? And the spongy mesophyll cells, they have less chloroplasts. They have a nucleus and they have a distinct large vacuole. Look at my vacuoles. Having a large distinct vacuole pushes the chloroplasts to the outer region of the cell, makes them more exposed to the photons of light coming in to their photosystems. We're getting there in lecture two. The spongy cells, they are irregular and they are spaced out. This is so to allow more air spaces in this region to facilitate the process of gaseous exchange. Now, as stated before, the vascular bundles in dicot plants are arranged in a ring form. with the xylem being internal to the phloem. As we know, the xylem conducts water and mineral ions. The water is needed as a reactant in the photosynthesis process, specifically for photolysis. And the mineral ions are needed for the growth and nutrition of the plant. The phloem, on the other hand, conducts products of photosynthesis, which is glucose. Good job. If you note, there are more stomata in the lower epidermis. Think about it. We need more stomata to promote the process of gases exchange. Let's get a little bit deeper into the palisade parenchyma. Let's talk about one of these beautiful organelles, the chloroplast. This is the typical anatomy of a chloroplast. It's green in appearance due to its constituent pigment, the chlorophyll. It has other pigments, which we'll talk about later on when we're looking at the light versus light independent reactions. Double membrane. What did you learn about the endosymbiont theory in unit one? It has a inner and outer membrane. There is the circular DNA, again, another attribute due to endosymbiotic theory. Look at these structures here. It looks like a stack, right? Think of it as a stack of plates. So you're washing the dishes and you stack your plates on each other. We call that whole stack granum. And each of that stack or each of those plates represents what we call the thylakoids. The significance for stacking thylakoids together is to increase the surface area for light harvesting. Well, guys, we have completed objective one. Try the structure of a dicot leaf, a palisade cell, and a chloroplast, and relating these structures to their functions. Next, I'll be conducting a virtual lab for the construction of these organelles as shown under a microscope. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to keep the movement going. Bye.